Good morning. Welcome to the St. Brendan on the Lake Parish community and a special welcome to any visitors who are joining us today. My name is Kathy Phillips and I will be proclaiming the readings today. Today we celebrate the 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time. There are a few announcements. There will be Eucharistic Adoration this Monday in Newfane from 4 to 7 p.m. This Thursday at 6 p.m. will be the last novena to the Blessed Mother Mary in Auckett until May. There will be a second collection this week for World Mission Sunday. Our celebrant today is Father Andrew Lorisella. Our opening hymn this morning is number 578, Lord of All Hopefulness. Number 578, please rise and join in singing. <coughs> Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Greetings, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. We thank God for this opportunity once again to gather as God's people. And as you may have noticed on the way in, we have completed the uh, installation of our panic bars on the door. 
you know, so now, you know, we could keep them open so you could come in from the outside. So hopefully it, coming in was not a, as much of an adventure as it may have been last week. But the good thing is not that we anticipate any fires or any emergencies, but the good thing is we're never trapped in. We could always leave without those doors and the locks being an issue. So we thank you for, you know, your generosity was part of what made that happen. And we're always mindful of safety and always open to ways that we could improve the safety of everybody in our worship sites and hopefully even more improvements will come. Even as you're aware, today is World Mission Sunday, where we're mindful of the church throughout the world and the work of missionaries, those who do the work of bringing the gospel to people who may never have heard it before, parts of the world where the faith was not as uh, firmly established as it is in other places, and we have an opportunity to support them with their generosity. So, I mean, ushers, I know you've been doing a lot of overtime lately with the second collections, but we just have one today, but for a, a good cause. As we prepare for the celebration, we remember that we are all, in some way or another, missionary by virtue of our baptism, by virtue of our confirmation. You know, we have the sacramental markings in us, but with those sacramental marks come responsibility to be the bomb, to be light, to be conduits of God's goodness. So as we begin, we prepare by calling to mind our sins and times we have not been mindful of the role that has come with our sacramental life, the times that we have abused that, the times that we have pursued other things less deserving, and we ask for our God's mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed Cyrus, whose right hand I grasp, subduing nations before him, and making kings run in his service, opening doors before him, and leaving the gates unbarred. For the sake of Jacob, my servant of Israel, my chosen one, I have called you by your name giving you a title, though you knew me not. I am the Lord, and there is no other. There is no God besides me. It is I who arm you, though you know me not, so that toward the rising and the setting of the sun, people may know that there is none besides me. And I am the Lord, there is no other. The word of the Lord. from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the Church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, remembering you in our prayers, unceasingly calling to mind your work of faith and labor of love, and endurance in hope of our Lord Jesus Christ before our God and Father. Knowing, brothers and sisters, loved by God, how you were chosen. For our gospel did not come to you in word alone, but also in power 
and in the Holy Spirit and with much conviction. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. The Pharisees went off and plotted how they might entrap Jesus in speech. They sent their disciples to him with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth, and you are not concerned with anyone's opinion, for you do not regard a person's status. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Knowing their malice, Jesus said, Why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin that pays the census tax. Then they handed him the Roman coin. He said to them, Whose image is this and whose inscription? They replied, Caesar's. At that, he said to them, then repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When we read about what the prophets have done, what the apostles have done, what the saints have done. Many have very remarkable stories. And sometimes what makes their stories remarkable is they did these amazing things often without having the resources or just the right conditions that we would expect one would require in order to do that. Look at how saints, people very meek and humble, had the courage to stand up to their oppressors take bold uh, stands of defense for the faith, or people who started great apostolates with very little money, very little resources, but you know, being compelled to believe that that is what God led them to do, found great success and great support. So we could easily marvel at that and just wonder, well, and ask the question we often do, how did they do that? It's like when we see a magician do something that doesn't seem possible, that surprises our expectations. How did they do that? How did that happen? Well, our scriptures today attest to what it was that made people who were faithful to God, who professed the name of God, who honored his kingship over and above all of the other powers. It shows them how they had the power of God with them that brought them far beyond what their own limits were. We hear when we are right with God, when we're in line with God, when we put God's name over and above all things, we have a great ability, a greater capacity than what we have with our own wits, our own resources, or even our own virtue. In the gospel story, Jesus well, Jesus being God and possessing the fullness of that power, we see how that power is at work when people who were trying to get Jesus cornered, trying to burst his bubble, trying to embarrass him, they face him with a dilemma having to do with paying taxes. And the question of, well, you know, should we be paying our taxes or not? Sometimes we could look at that gospel and say that it's a matter of who owes who what. But that's actually not what the theme, what the real issue is. 
The real theme of that gospel was Jesus being faced with a dilemma, but with the power of God that he possessed, went right down the middle of that dilemma in a way that nobody would expect, and wowed and astonished those who were trying to entrap him. There were many other times when that happened, especially when we read the Gospel of John. We see that irony being used being expressed over and over again. It looks like they've got Jesus cornered. It looks like they faced him with a dilemma that he can't get out of, something that he can't explain his way out of. But he takes a different way that nobody else would have expected him to take. That shows the wisdom of God brings us a different potential, a different possibility that we might not always see in our own estimation. Of course, Jesus possessed that to the fullest, but that is what empowered the apostles to do what they did. Driving out demons, healing the sick. There was a story of somebody possessed by a demon. And the apostles were trying with their own power, you know, to drive the demon out. And they turned to, how come they turned to Jesus? How come we weren't successful? How come we couldn't do this? Jesus said, only with prayer, only with my, the power of God can you do that. There are many other examples, you know, the healings that they did, or just simply the great success they had in spite of rough beginnings, in spite of opposition, how successful they were in bringing the faith far and wide. St. Paul, what empowered him, you know, in that day before GPS, before Howard Johnson's, before McDonald's, before AAA, and you know, the vehicles that we have today to make those trips almost all the way around the Mediterranean, bringing the faith of Christ to people that have not even heard about the prophecies anticipating Christ because they were not Jewish. He made those trips to Gentile territory, but it was by the power of God in him that he had that ability and he attested that many times it's not my own power it's no longer I who live it's Christ who lives in me this could be compared and you've probably heard me use the analogy before to the sail on a boat you know it's really amazing you know here being around some of the most beautiful waterways i think maybe even in the world you know and we have some nice yacht clubs around us we see the yachts we see the sails or people even with smaller sailboats and that's something that i've always found impressive even as a kid how the sail it doesn't exert itself it doesn't have power in it it opens itself up and the power of the wind is channeled through it and then it's able to move this really large vessel those of us who are disciples of god that's how we work it's not our own exertion it's not our own tact it's not our own willpower but it's opening ourselves up so the power of god works through us it takes humility sometimes to do that to admit it's not our own power but with humility comes empowerment in God's kingdom. Then when we're truly open, great things can happen. Now fast forwarding, looking at this day and age, we just might think that the faith has so many things going against it, you know, losing strength in numbers, losing support from other places, and just finding less and less of a welcome place in society and among other priorities. And, we might look like it's in vain, but if we ever do feel that way, may we look at what Jesus did with his power, how he faced those who were trying to entrap it and show that the faith could never be entrapped, could never be cornered. So may we have confidence in that same power that we saw Jesus acting with. If we have favorite saints, if we know their stories, you know, know of great success they had, or maybe even if we're inspired to read more about some other saints and their stories, what they've accomplished, not with their own power, their own strength, but by the power of God working through them. 
May we be inspired to do the same. Not let our limits frighten us or discourage us, but to consider all of that as a prompting to truly open up to God so that here today in our homes, in our town, in our church right here, great things can happen by just our allowing the power of God to work in our midst. Together, now let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not me. Consubstantial with the Father, all things are made. And for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified. He suffered death and was buried. And rose again the third day. And is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds the Father and the Son. The Father and the Son is adored and glorified, and is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I this one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I forward to the resurrection of the dead. The life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Knowing the great heavenly help that comes upon all of those who work to do the will of God, we now trustingly ask our God for what we need to continue persevering and doing what he asks of us. For the church, that our ministry and our contributions will provide for all peoples as we spread the good news to all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For world leaders, that they nurture the seeds of peace that have been sown by those working to make our world a better place, building understanding, peace, and goodwill, let us pray to the Lord that the fall harvest may be bountiful, providing food in abundance, especially for the poor and hungry. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for an increase in vocations to the priesthood, deaconate, and religious life, especially in the Diocese of Buffalo. Let us pray to the Lord. For those struggling with illnesses and recovering from surgeries, especially Janice Chuskowski, Cindy Chapman, Donnie Matalski, Jason Berry, Maureen Franapel, Arlene Jenkins, and those listed in the bulletin, that our Blessed Mother may comfort, console, and help them to find inner joy amid their challenges. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all the faithfully departed, especially Father James Hassett, that the Good Shepherd may welcome them into the peace of heaven, and especially for Frank Larkin, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all of us gathered here today, and for our prayers and intentions, that we bring before the Lord, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hey, Father, these are our needs and petitions that we bring before you today. We ask that you grant them through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Please join in our hymn during the offertory, number 494, How Great Thou Art, number 494.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal Mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again, until
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace.
The old temple takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I have now heard you, that you should have carried my word. But only say in the word, my soul shall be healed. Please join in our hymn during the communion, number 821, Bread of Life, Hope of the World, number 821. For those unable to attend Mass in person to receive the Eucharist, I invite you to pray an act of spiritual communion. <clears throat> My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. One more willing minister. They have another station that could be taken. If the ciborium is on the altar.
Let us pray. <laughs> Grant, O oh Lord, we pray that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give us in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Just before we dismiss, um, shortly after Mass, our faith formation students and their families are going to be leading a special rosary, but all of you are welcome to stay for that if you'd like. We know during this month, um, you know, we give some special attention to that devotion and in our world and in things, you know, locally and abroad. There's no shortage of things to pray for, so you're more than welcome to stay and pray with our students if you'd like. Our closing hymn this morning, number 522, Glory and Praise to Our God, number 522. Yeah.
all that. Good morning, Nancy. 